Good morning. Dobre dan. So my name is Steve Jones. So I'm going to talk about um, some layer one technology. I know that many in the room, this is not perhaps an area that, uh, that you understand deeply. Um, but there is definitely things going on within 400 gig uh, and 800 gig, which I'll come on to later. But I just want to point out a few things that some of our customers have discovered when running 400 gig and beyond over DWDM. I work for a company called Hubersuna Cube Optics. We're a Swiss-German organization. We're represented in the Czech Republic by uh, Bell Stewart and, and Vit will translate to Czech everything I say. We are providers of uh, components to key transceiver manufacturers at 100 gig and 400 gig and 800 gig, and even the, looking into terabit uh, transceivers that are coming. We also supply a wide range of active and passive WDM systems, CWDM, DWDM. We do splitters. We do indoor and outdoor WDM equipment. We can mix splitters, uh, uh, transponders, amplifiers, uh, as, as you require. We're about a 900 million euro turnover organization. Uh, we also do things like uh, data center solutions in, in the optical fiber layer from fiber management trays, etc. So a huge range uh, of, of products that we offer. That's the end of the product pitch. So looking ahead now to the 400 gig and what's happening in the market. So uh, these, some of these uh, studies now are a little bit out of date because things move on really, really quickly. 400 gig, we're seeing more and more inquiries for 400 gig. Um, predominantly still within the data center, and I'll come on to some of the 400 gig transceiver options offerings in a moment. But we're seeing now also 400 gig coming out into the WAN, i.e. connecting between locations. We're seeing a much bigger growth in that area. But without doubt, the vast majority of 400 gig deployments still remain with, within the data center. But that will change. 800 gig is coming down the line. Um, there's always, uh, as from a vendor, there's always a lag between the marketing and the reality. Uh, I'm sure you all know this. So 800 gig is available if you're the right customer. But 400 gig certainly is becoming more widely available. Oh, we, we've moved on. Don't put me in charge of technical stuff. So these are some of the 400 gig Transceivers. These are the vast majority. They're not all. There are always some, some exceptions. Um, and certainly within the data center, there's the SR8 and DR4 variants, which are um, multi-lane 50 gig, often with MPO connectors. And there's a huge debate. I've got a various conversations going on at the moment within data centers. Should they move from multi-mode to single mode? Uh, with the advent of 800 gig coming down the line? And the answer is, it depends. And you will hear a lot of it depends uh, throughout this presentation because it really does depend upon where you're at now. Because if we could create a network from scratch, from zero, we would have learned a lot of things along the way and we would deal with it differently this time, right? So uh, FR4 and LR8 are certainly being deployed. I know links offer 400 gig in the UK uh, uh, to, to the client, and they, they we're also seeing 400 gig to the line side, not just the client side, beginning to grow uh, from a data center, from a, a, an IXP um, point of view as well. So many of the uh, many of the transceivers shown at the top of the list. The, the main difference between them, other than um, LC or MPO connector, uh, tends to be the reach. So some very short reach on OM3, OM4 fiber, up to 40 kilometers uh, and beyond uh, with some LC connectors. Uh, but they all tend to use um, four times 100 gig to give you your 
400 gig capacity. The rest of this talk, I'm going to focus on the ZR, ZR Plus side of things, which are coherent transceivers, which is a single Lambda 400 gig. And there are some really, really clever modulation techniques that are being deployed to give you this extended reach of 400 gig over a single Lambda, a single wavelength, to give you the 80 uh, or even 120 kilometer reach. The interesting thing from a, a, a transceiver point of view is at 100 gig, there are very few 100 gig DWDM transceivers. They are available, and we're beginning to see a single Lambda 100 gig DWDM transceivers come into the market. And again, they are available, but define available. So there are 25 and 40 kilometer DWDM transceivers, single Lambda transceivers come into the market. Um, but they are still um, rare. If I look at the 400 gig space, as, as the, 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 the diagram shows, we can certainly reach uh, 80 kilometers, 120 kilometers and beyond with amplification of, of 400 gig. So the 400 gig market is maturing. The transceivers are available, and they are being deployed today. Typically, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, typically with QSFP DD form factor, um, th there are various form factors. It's very sensitive. Whoever comes up next, this is very sensitive. So 400 gig uh, DD um, is, is becoming the, the default, although there are CFP2 uh, variants available as well. I want to talk about, I'm going to put this down before I press it again. I'm going to talk about IP over DWDM. You may have seen a lot in the, in the press, in the articles about uh, IP over DWDM. So just explain, DWDM is DWDM is DWDM. Every single DWDM vendor in the market uses exactly the same ITU-specified DWDM lambdas. So you can easily connect vendor A, DWDM, with vendor B, DWDM, provided they use the same lambdas. DWDM is DWDM. Optical vendors try to complicate things by adding things like amplification, dispersion compensation, optical protection switching on top. But DWDM is DWDM. Every vendor uses exactly the same. So there's a move towards, and the article is saying that you no longer need transponders, that you can connect, as the, at the bottom of the diagram shows, you can connect your switch or router, or router if I'm English, directly to your passive DWDM MUX, and this works absolutely fine. So the, arg the argument is that you no longer need a transponder or a MUX sponder in the network. This is true if you're building a network from scratch. So if you start today, you have, 400, you have a switch that's capable of 400 gig line cards, then you don't need a transponder. Unfortunately, many networks have to carry other lower speed services, such as 1 gig or 10 gig. So you can do transponding, which takes a gray optic and converts it to a colored optic. Or you can do mux sponding, where you can actually say, for example, take 4 times 100 gig in and take a 400 gig out. So both of these arguments are true. This is another it depends, based upon what your network is today and what services you have to carry today. Because whilst I'm talking about pr predominantly 100 and 400 gig, you've still, the vast majority of transceivers sold today are probably still 1 gig and 10 gig because they are the ones that are sold in huge volumes. It's changing slowly. It's changing slowly, and we're even, um, you know, we got things like 25 gig coming on. With 25 gig PON um, now available, next generation PON now available, uh, and uh, I know Nokia, for example, used next generation 20, 25 gig PON. You know, it doesn't take a lot to then start getting up to 100 gig. So 425 gigs, you get 100 gig, you soon need 400 gigs. Which is great, because it means I sell more kit. And I should explain, I, I have a wife, I have a two kids and a very expensive wife at home, so the more stuff you buy, the easier it is for me, okay? <laughs> She's not here, I can say, it's not being recorded, oh dear. 
I want to look now. This is from Inex. This is one of our customers. Inex in Ireland, the internet exchange provider in Ireland. And they, they did some studies and they looked at the, uh, what's happening within this, um, in this instance, 200 gig 16 QAM constellation. And as you can see, the little green dots are all in the middle. Brilliant. That's, that makes it really easy. So these green dots with the modulation used, this is the data this, this passing pa to and fro, looking at the X polarity and the Y polarity. I'm not going to go any deeper than that. Ah. This is what a, 60, a 600 gig uh, 32 and 64 QAM constellation looks like if you actually analyze it in detail. Lots of green dots. But if you look, I'm sure there's a, a point. Is, ah, here we go. See these little green dots on the outside? These are bits of data. They're not in the middle anymore. They're on the periphery. They're on the outside. That creates a few challenges, which I'll come on to later. I mentioned before that DWDM is DWDM. Everyone uses the G694 uh, standard. I've just chosen three channels uh, here for, for, for an example, channel 21, 22, 23. And they are 100 gigahertz spaced. I have to get my gigahertz and gigabits correct. So they are 100 gigahertz spaced. Oh, I don't know why this is clicking on. Through the midpoint. So this is measured through the midpoint. And as you can see, there is a potential for some overlap due to lack of passband. But that's been fine. F within a uh, 100 gigahertz, most tr transceivers actually transmit and receive within the 50 gigahertz window, which is in the middle. So the passband of a DWDM 100 gigahertz um, channel is actually you use 50 gigahertz in the middle of that. That enables you to run, for example, 80-channel DWDM if you want, using 50 gigahertz. Slow down. I told you I'd speak fast. So that gives you able to do sometimes 80-channel using 50 gigahertz space. But most MUXs, if you're using 40 channels, will use 100 gigahertz spaced MUX. And that's fine. That works. That works. Every DWDM vendor out there uses exactly the same technology. With 400 gig, however, that's becoming more widely used, it's becoming um, a bit of a problem. So we mentioned earlier, the easiest way to deploy 400 gig or multiple 400 gigs over a fiber is using D passive DWDM to multiplex and demultiplex 400 gig, easy. So some, unfortunately some, and I stress some 400 gig transceivers are slightly wider than the um, 50 gigahertz passband within a 100 gigahertz channel. So you need about 75 gigahertz passband within, you need about a 75 gigahertz passband within a 100 gigahertz grid. The 75 gigahertz passband will provide more than enough um, space, I don't know why this is clicking on all the time, 75 gigahertz will provide more than enough space for your 400, for all 400 gig coherent transceivers. It will also still support all your legacy 1 gig, 10 gig, 100 gig, 25 gig, whatever transceivers because it's the passband is slightly wider than that. So if you're deploying, if you're looking to deploy, and I know this is a lot of bandwidth, if you're looking to deploy multiple 400 gigs, this is certainly something that you need to consider dependent upon the modulation technique used of the transceivers and the FEC, the forward error correction, used on the uh, transceivers. So what was the problem? INEX, uh, the internet exchange provider in Ireland, they were trying to implement a 600 gig 64 QAM Anyone knows about uh, DWDM vendors, you know exactly which vendor this is, over DWDM. And they were hitting high bit error rates, so that the service became uh, unstable because of the high bit error rate that they were experiencing. 
So we worked with them, and this is where we came up with and looked into things and discovered that they probably, or they did need, they do need, a 75 gigahertz passband to support the 600 gig 64 QAM transmission that was used. But they're still able to support their, their legacy services over the same link. And this was about, from memory, about a 40 or 50 kilometer link around Dublin that, that they were trying to connect to data centers. So the options, if you're going to do N times 400 gig, is you can use 200 gigahertz spaced DWDM muxes, which is what uh, INEX chose to do. So um, that's great. It works. You have 200 gigahertz space now, so you have plenty of uh, passband available to, to do this. The downside is that you lose um, channels. So if you've got a, an 8-channel mux, you're reducing it to 4. If you've got a 40-channel mux, you're reducing it to 20 because of the 200 gigahertz spaced muxes. But it's perfectly fine, and, and, and it works. Option two is you use 75 gigahertz space... 75 gigahertz spaced passband muxes, and we're showing one of our muxes there, the, the NCX range, which will support 75 gigahertz spaced muxes to allow you to transmit any 400 gig or above um, transceivers over your network. Any questions? Okay, no problem. You'll find me in the bar later anyway. Thank you. Thank you very much.